Well, good morning, everybody. Good and, morning. And thank you for being here. This is a, a really nice crowd for a, a location that's a little obscure, uh, but a nice location nonetheless, because, of course, the kiosk is here. And uh, we're reminded that uh, uh, the particular program that we're talking about today does a lot of good for the city of Lincoln, and we want to talk about that a little bit more. But these kiosks, I think, Susan, were built with last year's money? 2017 money. Okay, very good. Well, anyway, I, we wanted to point that out. It makes our trail system more friendly and accessible, hopefully, right? And uh, in, in that regards, we also want to uh, thank the Great Plains Trails Network uh, for everything they've been doing and continue to do for the city best trail system in the country, right? Doesn't get any better, doesn't get any better than that. But uh, specifically, we wanna talk about the Lincoln Cares program. And as most of you know, the Lincoln Cares uh, program allows the customers of Lincoln Electric System to add a dollar to their bills each month uh, to support parks and recreation, to support the Lincoln Library System, and to support the Aging Partners Network here in the city of Lincoln. And we started that partnership way back in 2003 because we believed then, as we believe now, that the generosity of Lincoln citizens should be given avenues uh, for partnership and commitment. Uh, and we know that the people of our city, in various ways, are interested in helping with the growth and development of the community. Very generous in that regard. Today, almost 15 years now, hard to believe, Susan Rodenberg, where are you? Where, Susan? Oh, there you are, okay. I wanted Susan to raise her hand anyway because she and I were there at the creation of this particular program. It was one of the first times we worked together uh, and uh, gives me the opportunity to thank Susan for all her uh, campaign leadership and funding leadership and a variety of parks projects throughout the years. Thank you. So, but this particular program, Susan, now I understand has raised almost $1.5 million uh, for our parks and uh, other uh, department programs since the beginning. So it's getting to be quite a hunk of money. We're grateful to LES. Uh, I need to say that many times over. They, they bear the burden of sorting through and, and administering the program, and we thank them for that. And we thank the people of the city who choose to participate in the program. Uh, other sponsors over time have participated, some of them quite large corporate sponsors. Uh, media sponsors have played a big role in recent years and, are, and, and, uh, and there are a multitude of other part, uh, project partnerships who have been a part of this from time to time. I want to recognize a few of the people who make uh, this all work. Uh, Lisa Hale is here today. Where are you, Lisa, with LES? Vice President of Customer Service, thank you for all your help and for the help of the people in your office and LES. Uh, do we have any members of the Lincoln Cares Advisory Board here? Raise your hand if, if any of you are here. Double duty, Lisa, thank you. Uh, and then I also, of course, want to recognize any city council members who are here today, and Carl Eskridge is here. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for all your cooperation on this and many other, many, many other great community programs we've worked on together. This year, uh, as I understand it, the donations uh, for Lincoln Cares will go to five different initiatives. We'll be adding fitness equipment and doing some facility upgrades for aging partners at their new fitness center. Uh, we'll be adding to the library's popular maker spaces. Cooper Park, Lincoln's oldest park, will receive some new fitness equipment. 
and donations will support the Haynes Branch Prairie Corridor, which, as most of you know, is a legacy project that will link in, that will link Pioneers Park with Spring Creek Prairie. And finally, we'll be funding Parker's Pal Scholarship Program for you <laughs> for another year. The directors of our parks and libraries and aging departments uh, will have more details on all of this in just a, uh, a few seconds. But I do uh, finally have uh, the honor right now of recognizing and thanking our media partners who have been a part of Lincoln Cares now for nine consecutive years. Uh, they help us get the word out. They are the main vehicles for getting the word out. And it includes Broadcast House, NRG, Amy Graham. I don't know if Amy's here today. Uh, Alpha Media, Joy Patton. Lincoln Journal Star, Tammy McFall works with the program. Uh, KLKN TV, Roger Moody and KOLN. K-G-I-N, Sarah Blaine. I hope I'm pronouncing Sarah's name right. These uh, uh, five media organizations have all been working with the program for some time now. So, uh, one more thing before I turn it over to the department uh, heads. Uh, I don't think I need to remind most of the people here but today uh, is the seventh Give to Lincoln Day. It's an opportunity for everybody in the community to pick out one or more of the 364 local nonprofits who have signed up for the day. Uh, this year, the Lincoln Community Foundation is providing a $400,000 match for the money that you and I donate, uh, the largest amount, I think, of any of the years largest ever. You'll find uh, all that information at givetolincoln.com. The list of nonprofits includes, are you listening now? Includes the Lincoln City Libraries, the Lincoln Parks Foundation, the Seniors Foundation, and also some organizations uh, associated with the city uh, and with uh, other partners that we work with, Friends of uh, Pioneers Park and the Friends of Wilderness Park, to name a couple. So, because of all these partnerships, uh, individual donations, Give to Lincoln Day, Lincoln Cares, everything goes further when we partner up and do things together as we do so often in this community. So with that, I'm turning it over to the directors. We'll start with Lynn Johnson with Parks and Recreation and go on to Randy Jones with Aging Partners and finish up with Pat Leach with the Lincoln Public, with the Lincoln City Libraries. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. Part of my role this morning is to explain a little bit about how you and everybody can participate in the Lincoln Cares program. As the mayor said, we are now entering our 16th year of this program, and this has been incredibly successful. Uh, as the mayor said, we've raised about almost one, or a little over $1.5 million so far, about $915,000. It's been raised through direct contributions, a dollar at a time. Uh, part of the hallmark, or one of, one of the, I think, the significant elements of the Lincoln Cares program is that we try to match those community donations with other partners and try to stretch those dollars. And we've done that very successfully over the life of Lincoln Cares, and there's been about $600,000 of matching dollars from community partners who have helped with projects as well. Lincoln Cares is easy. You sign up at LES to voluntarily add $1 to your bill every month, and I can tell you it comes on your statement, either paper or paperless. We just celebrated paperless billing uh, last week, and the dollar is automatically added to your total. We're very, great, or we're very um, thankful to LES that they are collecting those dollars. They transfer to those cities. We distribute them to the departments, and then we get them out directly excuse me, directly into projects. Those interested in participating in Lincoln Cares can go to les.com slash lcdonate, or there is also a Lincoln Cares website, and that is lincolncares.info. 
And I'll have a little bit more to talk about parks projects here in a little bit, but I'm going to turn this over to Randy at this point. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I want to thank LES for their commitment to the program. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. I uh, also want to thank the Seniors Foundation, who helps match our annual gifts from the uh, Lincoln Cares program. This last year, uh, we made a move of our fitness senior fitness facility. We were previously located at 233 South 10th in the old police station, and uh, we took advantage of an opportunity to move to a new location at 555 South 9th, and uh, we have new fitness equipment in that facility, and it's, uh, our, our seniors have a lot of enthusiasm and community around the services that are coordinated through that site and through the fitness equipment. Fitness is so important to seniors in terms of staying vibrant and um, healthy and reducing falls. And so we would encourage people to use that facility. That's what our Lincoln Cares dollars have helped us do this past year. We're also looking at enhancing some of the access uh, for handicapped uh, access to the building and our Lincoln Cares dollars will help with that in the coming year. So with that I want to introduce two folks that will be more eloquent than myself in terms of uh, users of the facility. Rachel can we start with you and then move to Emma? Oh, of course. Good morning everyone and thank you for inviting me. I just want to let you know that once upon a time I retired my knees started bothering me. I found aging partners. They teach you how to exercise at our young age and they, they make you feel at home. So now I can still mow my, my grass and function and I can get up very easily. And I want to thank everyone who has helped us to be in that area and the new, the new fitness consent center is very good. We really are enjoying it. And I want to thank you for caring because you'll get there. <laughs> and if you're very fortunate, you'll meet aging partners and they will help you have fun in your young older age. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Emma George. I'm 97 years old. I've lived in my house for 75 years. I still do all my work. But I'll tell you one thing. If it wouldn't be for aging partners that I go down and exercise twice a week, I go Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I usually do seven machines. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to stay in my home and do the things that I've been doing. I used to do a lot of yard work, but they took that away from me, my kids. But when they're not looking, I still sneak out, and I still do a few things I'm not supposed to do. They, they don't tell me what they're doing, so I feel like I don't have to tell them what they're doing. And I just enjoy all the girls and everybody down there are so helpful and good. They're wonderful people. And I look forward to it. I tell my family, don't bother me Tuesdays or Thursdays. That is my day off. And everybody has been so good. Randy and, and all our, our helpers are wonderful. And thank you for having me be here to talk to you. And I'm going to stick there as long as I can. <laughs> In fact, in fact, I was raised in this bottom down here. I remember going underneath that bridge, walking over to the pond over there. We, us girls used to go ice skating. We used to have a lot of fun. So this has been a lot of improvement. And then I want to thank the park, uh, Cooper Park. I have lived in that area for 75 years, and I worked at that school for 17 years. That is a wonderful park. And uh, they have a lot of baseball games going now, and I think it's a wonderful thing. Thank you, everybody. Did I talk too long? No, you did good. I'm Pat Leach, the director of Lincoln City Libraries, and I want to thank Emma for showing us such a great role model for aging well. Thank you. Wow. 
At the libraries, we are so grateful for the extras that Lincoln Care provides for our library customers. And we're grateful to LES, of course, for this service. And I want to point out that Lisa Hale of LES is also a library board member. So double props to Lisa today for her participation in support of libraries. Our libraries have been engaging in a worldwide phenomenon that's known as makerspaces, which is all about learning by doing and learning by doing in community. So often makerspaces are places that are rooms furnished with expensive high-tech equipment like big 3D printers and laser cutters, things that an average person probably couldn't afford but might want to try. So maybe to test an idea or make a prototype or put an idea into three dimensions to learn by doing. Well, the libraries are providing makerspace type activities, not by creating an actual space with that kind of material, but by investing in items like little robots and circuits and software and even art supplies. And then we set up sort of a pop-up makerspace and invite the public to come together and learn together by doing things together. So this year, our Lincoln Cares funds will help to purchase some of the furnishings like portable tables and chairs that allow us to do those events more effectively. So we're combining Lincoln Cares funds with funds provided to the, Link, to the Foundation for Lincoln City Libraries through Allstate. And Gail McNair, who is the Executive Director of the Foundation for Lincoln City Libraries, is here. And Gail has been instrumental in helping us find great matches for the Lincoln Cares funds. So because of those gifts, we're better able, uh, equipped to offer this new way of learning throughout the library system and really through the whole community. And I've invited Julie Bino, who is the Public Services Coordinator at Bennett Martin Library, to tell you a little bit about those makerspace events. Julie. Thank you, Pat. Uh, my name is Julie, and I want to tell you I have the best job in the world. One of my responsibilities is to work with the Makerspace mentors who read reviews, suggest items to purchase, plan the events, and work with our library customers. They are staffed throughout the system. I would like to thank you for the funding for the needed Makerspace materials and furnishings. We have purchased projects to teach robotics, circuitry, programming, building, drawing, and also craft supplies, sewing machines, and 3D printers. I see them used regularly at all the library locations, um, at, during school nights, at outreach events such as the Hour of Code at Innovation Campus, and we are now working with the CLCs, the Community Learning Centers, at the schools. What we are seeing with the Makerspace events are phenomenal and surprising. The learning and collaboration that happens is amazing when the projects are used. We are, these, I'm going to give a few examples. We are seeing parents become extremely involved with their children. For instance, we had a robotics program and a mom stayed and worked with their children for two full hours. And then she asked for the schedule and came back to some of the other programs. At another, at a school night, we had a family, the mom, the dad, and the kids worked together programming Ozobots. And in case you don't know what an Ozobot is, this is an Ozobot. They're little tiny robots. The family worked together, they were sharing programming tips, and there was just an excitement at the table when um, they got the Ozobots to do what they were supposed to do. It's kind of a learning curve to learn programming, and this is a, one of the basic steps. Kids from all different backgrounds learn together and work collaboratively. We've seen kids at Bennett Martin from St. Mary's and McPhee work together on projects, and then they, they have new friends now, and then they, they make plans to come back together the next day. We're seeing more fathers participate. At one school night, the father and the son were using little bits, which are little circuitry projects. Um, the, the son was creating a piano, kind of that makes piano noises, and the dad was working on his little bit to make um, strobe lights. Well, the next thing we knew, they'd hooked them together, and when they played the piano, the strobe lights went off. It was just the interaction between the two was just priceless, as far as I was concerned. We helped a person make a braille chess piece on the 3D printer. She could not find a replacement part anywhere. Sewing machines bring in all ages and they're even bringing in men. They bring in their own machines to the programs or they use ours. They, might, they may want to learn um, what they need in a sewing machine to buy one, how to use their own, or to use ours for projects. This is empowering people and they're doing this all at the library. And then of course they can find books for sewing projects there too. People of all ages that may have not used a library before are coming and learning in new ways. 
Thank you, Lincoln Cares and everybody else. One more piece, Mayor, if that's okay. Good morning. Lynn Johnson again with Lincoln Parks and Recreation. I do want to recognize some folks as well. Uh, Jim Crook with our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board is here this morning. Jim biked over. We should have all probably done that. Uh, and I also want to recognize a couple of folks from the Lincoln Parks Foundation. Since the beginning, the Lincoln Parks Foundation has been a partner in this effort. Maggie Stuckey, who is, we can still say new, the new Parks and Recreation Foundation Director, and Coley Bargan, who is the office manager with the foundation. I want to say that, as the mayor said, we're excited to be here this morning, and we're celebrating the installation of this new trail kiosk along the Salt Creek Trail levee. This was a 2007 Lincoln Cares project. Um, it is one of three new directional kiosks being installed along Lincoln's trail system, and it's an example of the power of partnerships. It's the result of the combined generosity of Lincoln Cares donors and the Great Plains Trails Network. And again, thank you to GPTN for everything that you do. 2018 Lincoln Cares donations will be supporting three parks and recreation projects. We have been working with the South Salt Creek neighborhood to develop a master plan for renovation of Lincoln's first park. Cooper Park is located at 8th and D. We heard just south of what is now uh, Park Middle School. Lincoln Cares funds combined with private funding will allow us to install new outdoor fitness equipment in parks. And that's a new trend in parks is we're essentially adding opportunities for adults to get involved in being in, in physical activities outdoors in parks throughout Lincoln. Again this year, Lincoln Cares donations will support preservation of tall grass prairie along Haynes Branch between Piners Park and Spring Creek Prairie. Lincoln is known as the Capitol Prairie. We're pretty proud of that. And Tallgrass Prairie is our natural legacy. Less than 2% of Tallgrass Prairie remains. The Prairie Corridor on Haynes Branch preserves and protects a unique ecosystem. And, a trail, and as the trail is developed through the corridor, it will become a special opportunity for recreation, outdoor education, and experiencing Nebraska as pioneers did more than a century ago. Lincoln Cares donations help to demonstrate community support, leveraging significant funding from partners in the project. And finally, since the very beginning of the Lincoln Cares Community Donation Program, a portion of the donated funds have been used to provide opportunities to children from low-income families that might not otherwise have the opportunity to take swim lessons, go swimming, join a sports program, or to participate in recreation programs. We collect Lincoln Cares donations, we give them to Parker, and he provides those funds to uh, uh, provide scholarships throughout the community. Uh, Lincoln Cares donations, as I said, are, donate, are combined with a generous gift this year uh, from the Lincoln area retired school per personnel to support the Parker's Palace uh, Scholarship Program. And again, I'd like to thank everyone who currently supports Lincoln Cares Program and certainly encourage others who might have an interest to sign up for the program. Uh, the combined impact of that $1 a month really does add up and it makes a significant impact on Lincoln. I'd like to introduce Gary Bentrop. I'm sorry. I apologize, Gary. Gary is with the Great Plains Trails Network. Gary has also been on our Pedestrian Bicycle Advisory Committee for many years. I just want to say a quick few words regarding these uh, trail kiosks. Um, so we have over 134 miles of trails in Lincoln, of uh, paved trails and crushed rock trails. And this network of trails came about because of the great partnerships that we have from City of Lincoln to the Lower Platte South NRD the Nebraska Trails Foundation, and many other partners. And this is a nationally recognized system. In 2014, the American Planning Association gave Lincoln's Trails System the Great Places Award, one of 10 awards that year. And most citizens in Lincoln live within a mile of trails. And so these wayfinding signs are really critical for both residents and visitors to experience Lincoln's a wonderful uh, resource here in the trail system, but to also visit the other resources that we have, like the zoo and so forth. And so uh, the Great Plains Trail Network was really pleased to partnership with the Lincoln Cares Program and the City of Lincoln to make these kiosks a reality. And I think really what this uh, press conference really shows is that it takes all these partnerships uh, to really make what Lincoln's, what it is today, such a great place to live. And I think, you know, it's highlighted in that today is the Give to Lincoln Day, and there's 
so many nonprofits working toward making uh, that quality of life in Lincoln a great place. And so, thank you. I can't tell you how, how good it makes me feel uh, to come to a press conference like this and have three different departments from city government uh, presenting to you in such an intelligent and, and coherent and effective way. Uh, they all did a great job. And, but I have to say, Aging Partners stole the show today. Huh? These two ladies were terrific. So uh, with that, uh, I think we're ready to take questions from the press. Uh, but with all that footage on Aging Partners, you know, it's on you if they don't get on TV. I don't want to be, my kids will, you guys say, want to... my kids will say, Mother, you're always on TV. <laughs> oh, God. We'll answer questions uh, as we can. Uh, so uh, take that off. We're open to questions. <laughs>